Hello and welcome to the second video in the series Yoga for Futurists. Each of these videos seeks to give you some really simple practical activities that help you to have strategic conversations and think about what you might want to do in the world to come. Basically just using pen and paper and taking no more time than you need for a coffee break to have some useful discussions. As always, if there's anything in this video that you'd like to talk more about or you'd like to find out more about what I do, you can find me as Dr. Matt Finch on social media or visit my website, mechanicaldolphin.com. In the first of these videos, we used an activity called Arrows of Time to think about the context within which we're making strategic decisions. Together with your colleagues or peers or partners, you'd think about all the factors from the past that will still be affecting us as we make decisions in the present towards the future. And we also try and capture all the things that might be coming down the line towards us from the future. That includes not just the things that we expect or may have planned for, or things that we regard as inevitable. It also means capturing our hopes and fears. It means looking for the factors that we might not have taken into account, the things that might blindside us and capturing all these things, even when they seem to contradict or overlap, to get a better picture of the space in which we're operating and in which we're having our conversations about what the future looks like. But once you've had those conversations, you have to move on to answering the real question, which is, what are we actually going to do? And the activities in this video are meant to help you to prompt and structure the conversations about deciding on a plan of action. So the first concept I want to introduce here is called command intent or commander's intent from the military. And what this is, is your top line of your orders on for any given operation. It sets out the end state that a military operation is trying to achieve. And once you know what the overall publicly stated goal of an operation is, then at any point during your mission, you can look back to the command intent and think, is what I'm doing helping us to achieve that goal? So it's about setting an overall mission and understanding exactly what it is you're trying to achieve as a top line statement. In the context of you having conversations with your colleagues or peers or partners over a coffee break, you might discover command intent by having a discussion about how you would complete a sentence like this. If we achieve only one thing in the next two years, it should be what? Have a discussion with the other people in your meeting, the other people around the table, and see what their answers are. See if you can come to consensus. Sometimes the commander's intent is handed down to us. Sometimes it comes from a wider strategic plan which we need to implement. But in this case, if you have that freedom and flexibility, it's really worth having the conversation just to see where people's minds are at, how they perceive the future, and they perceive what's a priority. But what you want to do is come to common ground about understanding the one thing that you are seeking to achieve in the time frame you're planning for. So if you wanted, you could pause this video now and think about how you would set out the command intent of the group that you're planning for. And then when you've done that, we need to get a little bit more concrete about how we get to the end state which we desire. So the next thing you would do is get your team to set out examples of actions that will help them to achieve this goal. Brainstorm as many as possible. Go for ones which are more plausible, but also less plausible. Look for things that you haven't tried before, things that you might want to experiment with. Once again, it doesn't matter if some of the actions are mutually contradictory. The aim is to brainstorm as many possible actions that would help you to achieve the command intent that you've agreed. So once again, you can pause this video momentarily while you have that discussion, dot point as many of those actions as you can. And then we move on again, and this time, I'm gonna get you to do some drawing, but it's nothing too artistic or complicated. What I'm gonna get you to do is divide a piece of paper into two sections like that. Having set out your command intent, and a series of example actions. In the top part of this page, you write down what success would look like for this operation and how we might measure it. So what would success look like for the thing you're trying to achieve and how could you measure success? It's really important to have a yardstick so that you know whether your endeavors have succeeded or failed. Up here, come up with as many possible useful ways as you can think of 
of measuring the success of your endeavor. And once again, you can pause this and think about jotting some of those ideas down. And then when that's done, in the bottom half of this piece of paper, you answer this question. What would excellence look like? If you were to go above and beyond success, if you were to massively overachieve, what would it look like for you to exceed the stated goal in a way that was useful and beneficial? This is a chance for you to imagine stretch goals, to imagine the realization of your wildest dreams, to imagine how you will cope with exceeding your stated measure of success, as well as how to enjoy it. So once you've captured success and the potential measurements for success in the top half of this page, in the bottom half, I want you to set out your vision for what would excellence look like in your pursuit of that goal. And once again, you can pause this and have that discussion if you want to right now. The last part of this activity involves you dividing this piece of paper up into three columns. So you have an overall mission, your command intent, and you've set out some example actions that would help you to achieve this goal. And then you've started to think about measures of both success and excellence. In the last part of this activity, you answer these questions. In order to achieve our goal, what should we start doing? What should we stop doing? And what should we continue to do? Now, it's really important to come up with as many possible responses to each of these three questions in each of the three columns. But above all, it's really important for you to understand what you are willing to stop surrender or give up in order to achieve your chosen goal. All projects involve change and change always comes at a cost. Even if you are swapping out like for like, like replacing all the computers in an office, there's actually a demand on your time, finances, capacity, and your appetite for change, which is drained by any process of transformation. What that means is you have to give yourself some elbow room, you have to give yourself time, space, and energy in order to carry out the project, and that means making some kind of sacrifice or surrender in order to successfully achieve your goals. If you never stop doing anything, and you've seen this happen in organizations before, tasks and duties, missions and obligations pile up one on top of another, and actually it starts to affect your ability to achieve any of your stated goals. So when you think about the goal that you've set, the example actions you captured, the measures of success and excellence which you imagined, what are you willing to stop doing in order to successfully achieve your stated goal? And that's the last part of this activity is for you, together with the other people you're having this conversation with, to fill in these columns. What will we start, stop and continue in order to achieve our chosen goal? You can pause this video now if you're using it as a guide and take a few minutes to discuss. And those are the questions to get you started. You've already thought about the arrows from the past and the future which have given you some context for your decision making. And now we've taken you through a series of quick prompts to really nail down exactly what it is you want to do as you choose your way into the future. Once again, if you'd like to talk further, see more of this work, or just get in touch for a chat, you can find me on social media where I'm Dr. Matt Finch, or you can visit my website, mechanicaldolphin.com. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you have great time carrying out these activities and do feel free to drop me a line and let me know how you get on. Until next time, bye-bye.